Now, another policy area you're going to have to face is intellectual property and copyright issues. Now, you face two challenges in this respect. One, the challenge of every teacher in um, negotiating copyright and intellectual property rules in your own practice. But also, as a technology teacher, you need to teach your students best practice and acceptable practices around copyright and intellectual property. So this has always been an ongoing challenge. Um, so as a teacher, you are in an interesting position. Generally, copyright law in Australia does not permit educational uses of copyrighted material. In the United States, for example, it does. There is a fair dealing provision for education, education and educators to utilize copyrighted material. Now, we are trying to align ourselves with that. And there's been various trade treaties and so forth, um, exploring that and promoting that approach. Um, but at the moment, we don't have an implicit right in copyright law for educational use of copyrighted material. Now, the way around that at the moment has been for blanket um, agreements to be established that will allow educators to use copyrighted material and schools and universities pay an annual um, licensing amount for that and then essentially we're allowed to break copyright rules because the licensing covers that um, approach. Now eventually that will be hopefully replaced with the um, approach used in the USA where there is a general fair dealing expectation that educators can utilize copyrighted material to a certain extent. There are still some limitations of course, but that then um, will get away, will we'll remove the need for this ongoing licensing approach. So that said, you can, for educational reasons, use a range of materials. Now, it's not carte blanche, you can't do everything you might want, and it has to be for specific educational purposes, which can be quite restrictive. Um, for example, you can't show a movie just to entertain your students. It has to be for a very clear educational purpose. Now, a lot of schools show movies at the end of term um, simply to keep the students engaged, which breaks those rules. Now, in the main, teachers and have been breaking copyright laws for, for decades. Everyone accepts it. Everyone acknowledges it. These licenses are put in place to try to sort of um, provide some uh, recompense back to the authors of material, but it's generally accepted practice. I've never heard of a case where uh, teachers have been prosecuted for copyright infringement at a significant scale. So that said, you have the responsibility to teach your students about copyright. Um, now that's a bit of a challenge. Yes, we can teach them the basic rules, but when it gets down to things such as copyright restrictions on songs or on movies that they might download off the internet or off pictures that they download and use in an assignment, these are all potential problems regarding copyright law which are commonly infringed by many, many people. And indeed, um, for many years, the music industry fought against downloading music. Now, eventually they gave up on that and it was incorporated into um, changes to copyright uh, with res respect to uh, movie download, uh, sorry, music downloads. Now, we expect the, public, the same thing will happen eventually with video. Because um, the video, the movie industry has sort of failed to have any real impact upon the downloading of movies and so forth, and other 
sharing processes have emerged as they did with the music industry that still allow the industry to function and to gain um, remuneration for their efforts, but without the heavy handed copyright restrictions. So we do need to understand that copyright was actually originally intended to support the free sharing of material. Um, before copyright laws were brought in place, people didn't share anything. Um, copyright was brought into place so that there would be a period of time wherein um, material should be paid for, um, some monetary benefit should be gained to the authors of that material, and that copyright would then expire generally on their death or on their death after a certain amount of time. Uh, the industry hasn't particularly honoured that approach um, and increasingly, which started with Walt Disney, um, they've looked at ways of extending that idea of copyright by having corporations own material. And of course, corporations don't die. Having that then extend the life of copyright and basically subvert the original intent of copyright and intellectual property. So there are some issues around that. Um, there's also the open source movement where say Creative Commons by um, ed, rather than just making everything open and open source completely, still retaining some ownership in terms of recognition of being the author of material, but allowing others to utilize it. And Creative Commons licensing is probably the most um, common of these approaches, these licensing st structures. So you will need to teach your students about various aspects of copyright and of intellectual property. But when it comes to um, teaching and as a teacher, there are also issues. Now, in teaching your students, there are some, again, some good government programs that have been set up to assist with this. And smart copying is probably the strongest of these and they offer a whole series of online processes you can have your students go through to learn about copyright and intellectual property. Now, as a teacher, intellectual property is probably one of the biggest ones. Yeah, copyright's a big thing, but we generally have these systems of licensing to sort of cover teachers so that you can incorporate images and movie clips and so forth in your teaching material. But you need to understand that intellectual property extends to what you create. And essentially, anything that you create with regard to teaching belongs to your employer, regardless of whether or not you create it during school hours. It includes what you create on the weekends or on holidays. If it has to do with your employment, if it has to do with teaching, then it belongs to your employer. Now, this is a bit of a worry to some teachers, particularly those that create a lot of material. Um, so it has certain implications. In the main though, it's not as onerous as it may seem. Every once in a while, you might get some officious deputy principal or, some, or principal that thinks that they can make some money out of commercializing uh, teachers work. But we need to remember that teachers work in a framework of open sharing. We freely share material with each other all the time. And whenever I've been approached and had intellectual property issues discussed with myself, I've simply pointed out all of the material that I utilize in my teaching that have been developed by others. And fairly quickly, but some very rough calculations, it's identified that it's not worth pursuing um, intellectual property issues because it opens up such a can of worms. Of course, it's not just what you can make from intellectual property. It's also what you owe others as a result of using other people's intellectual property. And the course teaching is such a free and open sharing environment. Once you start trying to make money, you also have to put in place payment to anyone else 
that you're utilizing material of. And that fairly quickly quashes the issue. Now, university level, that's built into um, uh, the charters that universities have with staff. As an academic, um, I have an explicit statement in my enterprise bargain that says that while universities in theory own any of the intellectual property that we create, um, academics are given the express permission to um, publish and to write material and to write textbooks and we can be paid for that and the university won't seek any intellectual property ownership over any of that material and indeed we can give our intellectual property to publishers and so forth. Otherwise the entire process of academic publishing in terms of research wouldn't be able to be sustained nor would textbooks be able to be sustained. So it's well established that the system needs to not adhere to intellectual property. That said, it has been challenged in recent years more and more around the development of online material. Of course, that's much easier to sort of package up and see that you could make some money off. Um, but again, I've been involved in a number of those uh, processes in schools and at university level, and relatively quickly it becomes more problems than it's worth to pursue that avenue. In theory, there's the potential there for making lots of money. In practice, it's very, very difficult to do so. So intellectual property is generally not a huge issue in education. It may seem like a big issue, but in the main it's not. Probably the area that's most problematic is when certain sectors or schools put in a policy or in an expression that they don't want to share stuff. Um, at the moment, that's the position of Education Queensland. They don't want to share things created within Education Queensland by Education Queensland teachers with other schools, other teachers, other states. Um, and they've got some fairly strong restrictions on that. So that's caused a bit of a problem. Um, there's been a little bit of that among some of the private schools, but in the main, only very trivial amounts uh, compared to Education Queensland. And indeed, most other state and territories don't apply that in any way near the same degree. But we currently have a, a system and culture in place in Queensland where that is currently the case. So you will need to think about that when you're, if you're employed in Education Queensland, that material created within Education Queensland is generally not shared outside of the boundaries of Education Queensland. And the internet and um, digital systems that are in place uh, are used for sharing internally between teachers in Education Queensland and teachers outside of that system are generally not allowed access to that. Okay, so again, we'll discuss more of these issues in the tutorial.